OK, so uh, bear.me, so B E A R dot M E backslash icons, I C O N S dash web, W E B. You can also find me at uh, B E Travis on GitHub, and it's, it's posted there. Um, so this is where the, the presentation is living. You guys are free to uh, peruse it at your leisure. But basically, I'm going to run through it really fast. Um, and uh, hopefully, I will try and call out where we are in the presentation. You guys can follow along. So what I wanted to talk to you guys a bit about today is uh, icons and basically how they are designed and delivered for the web. Uh, and I'm going to try and do this in basically about 15 minutes. So we'll see how far I get. Um, so if you go on to the next slide, you'll see a lovely picture of um, Basically, me and my team. So the um, <laughs> thank you. So uh, the I work on the web platform team at Adobe. Uh, we basically try to make the web a better creative medium. We've worked with standards in the past, um, and we're kind of looking at new ways of exploring the web and kind of implementing what uh, designers are lacking. So if you move on to the next slide, uh, this is made with Reveal.js, so you can navigate the slides using the arrow keys. Um, some of the slides are multiple levels deep, so you go down. Um, to move on to the next stack of slides, you go to the right. Um, so what you should be on right now is the what is an icon slide. Um, so we're going to move forward again, um, and I will answer the question of what is an icon. So what you should have is you should have a little, little hand icon. Oh my goodness, this is amazing. OK. Well, now you guys know where, where the slides all live. So um, icons, I think, are really cool. They're visual metaphors. Um, they can hopefully give you a little bit more information than a blank projector screen. Um, but in this case, it's basically a hand telling you, like, this is how you can interact with, with a screen. This is your like, virtual avatar for how to interact with a device. Um, and the reason that we need icons is that you know, we have a lot of things. Can't quite hear me? The microphone isn't working at all. Just <laughs> shout. Okay. Yeah, this is gonna be. <laughs> of all the things I thought I would have trouble with um, in the presentation today, this was kind of not not it. So, um, early early UIs, um, very very basic, basically basically one level of information. You have all of your files there, and kind of you can do actions on it. It's kind of difficult to tell exactly what things are. You know, what's the difference between an executable? What's the difference between you know a text document? And so what you get is you get these kind of structured interfaces that start to use visual metaphors a lot more. You know, you have windows. Um, and a big part of those visual metaphors are icons. You know, you can see the difference between folders, trash cans, disks here at a glance because you have a visual representation of them. And these, of course, get more complicated uh, and more rich um, as we see the more modern OSs. And so as we get into these smaller <coughs> display sizes that can do more and more, we need icons because they can pack a lot of visual information that's readily identifiable in a small amount of visual real estate. So uh, what you can see here is you know, modern iOS devices. You can see all the branded icons, you know, how you can tell what app is what. You can see when you're actually in one of those applications, you know, all the actions you can perform. And you can see that really easily, even on kind of a small device, because you've got these icons to guide you. And if you think about it, up in the, the top of this, you've got icons for your signal strength, for uh, your uh, network connection, you've got your wireless network connection, you've got your battery power, and you've got all of that in this teeny, teeny, tiny bar up at the top. And if you can imagine like, how much fun that would be if that were converted to text, you can kind of think about what icons get you. So just to reiterate, icons should help people navigate an interface. Um, that's something to always keep in mind. Um, icons on screens kind of have some unique design considerations. Because you've got such a small amount of visual real estate, it's really important to make each pixel count. Um, so if you look at something like a cursor icon on the Mac operating system, you've only got 16 by 24 pixels to communicate that idea of an arrow. And so you want to make sure that each pixel is crisp and not blurred. And oftentimes, these translations to pixels will start out with an ideal form that you then kind of go and render as pixels, and then you hand tweak each pixel to make sure that it, it's nice. Like you want this black and white line on the left of the icon to be black and white. You don't want it to go through uh, kind of grays because that's going to appear blurry. And when you're actually building these icons, one of the things that you may realize is that it's easy to start with a vector format and then go ahead and rasterize it to each uh, various pixel size you may need. So you can start off with like a 16 by 24 vector version of this. 
um, in terms of your 16 by 24 measurement units, and then go ahead and render it to pixels. The thing to be careful of is that uh, if you scale your vector and then render it, if any of those vector points don't fall on a pixel boundary, you can wind up with uh, basically blurry images, even though you're starting with vector artwork. And so in this case, what you can see is you can see that that middle icon, uh, because this was originally drawn on a 16 by 24 grid, you're starting to get some gray pixels because it doesn't scale cleanly. So you've got basically gradations of black, gray, white, gray, instead of a nice black and white edge. And if you look at an even more extreme example of this, you can start off with this, this icon, which was designed on a 20 by 20 uh, vector grid. And then if you render it even at half a pixel off, you'll see that you get all of these like weird kind of blurry effects because your vector isn't falling on a pixel boundary and you're anti-aliasing everything. So the bad news is that icons may lose clarity um, whenever you're working with anything other than the exact pixels. And this is regardless of whether or not you're working with raster or vector formats and if you're scaling up or down. The good news though is that as you get um, to higher and higher uh, pixel density displays, these become less of an issue because if you're rendering kind of these small like gradations of gray, um, if those are smaller in physical pixel size than your eye can detect, then it's not going to matter as much. So that's especially good for vectors because they can render at kind of any pixel density without having to go back and reauthor your artwork. So I'm going to talk about a couple ways of using icons on the web, basically a couple of different uh, delivery mechanisms. But before that, I want to talk about what our ideal uh, icon delivery mechanism should be. And there are a couple character characteristics that I think are important. Um, I think that icons should be scalable. Like it's really nice to be able to author an icon once and use it at multiple sizes without having to go back and tweak your artwork. Uh, styleable, so if you have to use some kind of uh, different style set, like let's say all of a sudden you want to create a dark theme where you had a white theme before, or if you want kind of active or disabled states. It's nice if you can go back and style that icon after it's already been authored rather than having to go back and kind of retweak each icon individually. Icons should be accessible. So for people who are kind of visually impaired, uh, screen readers are how they access the web. So you should have some kind of text fallback for icons if they're actually part of the interface. It's also good if icons can be packaged into a single file. Um, it's often more uh, performant to have one network request for a single uh, media piece of media rather than accessing each of them individually. Also important that your icons perform well on your website. Basically you don't want uh, to have a noticeable performance hit just because you want to use icons. And finally, these things should all be easy to author and use. Like it doesn't matter how awesome your delivery mechanism is. Wow. It really wants to hop on that network. Um, so it doesn't matter how great your icon system is if it's going to be hard for you to either uh, create it or to use it. So the first uh, format that I want to talk about is raster icons. And this is basically just using uh, plain old images to deliver icons. You're going to deliver the actual pixels, uh, so that's why you have a pixelated cow here, um, as your icon. You can use this any time. You can use an image uh, on the web, so pretty much anywhere. So you can use them with image tag. You can use them in something like a background image uh, for an element so you can size and position it. Um, there are a couple ways of packaging raster icons uh, so that you can use that single file instead of delivering them all individually. Uh, you can base64 encode them in a sprite sheet. So you basically uh, encode each image as text within your CSS file and then you'll only deliver that CSS file. Uh, the downside of this is that uh, base64 is not the most uh, efficient way of packaging images, so it's going to be a little bit bigger than your binary image files. And the other thing is that there's a bit of a performance hit um, generally when decoding base64 images. Other way of packaging them is the sprite sheet, so you render them all to a single image file and then you will uh, reposition basically the, the image file and clip it, so you're only displaying one image at a time. So what's good about these raster icons is that uh, you know exactly what pixels you're going to be delivering, so especially if you know uh, what size you want, they're great. Um, browser support is again awesome. What's not great is that they're delivered at a fixed size and resolution, so you have to render them for each size and resolution uh, that you're going to be delivering for. Um, and also kind of, I think that the ways of packaging these into a single resource is a little bit hacky. So um, how many of you guys have used icon fonts? 
Sweet, okay, so you guys all know how awesome they are. Um, so uh, fonts are basically a mapping uh, from kind of a code representation of a uh, character to a visual representation of it. Um, and so what you can do is for basically the, the code for P, which is you know 112 in ASCII, you map it to a visual representation that everybody recognizes as a P. So of course what you can do is you can replace that visual representation with an actual icon. So now you know that code is going to map to a, a, a visual representation of a pig. Um, you can use these the same way you'd use web fonts. Um, so you guys should probably be familiar with this markup. Um, they're stylable, so you can resize them. You can uh, style them any way. You can color them. You can transition them. You can do all of that fun stuff. Um, and they're well supported because uh, font face is well supported. So I texted this all the way back to like IE5. So that should give you a sense for how, how often you can use these. Um, still a hack though. Um, Sizing and positioning can be a little bit difficult with these things because browsers do a lot of kind of fine tune adjusting to try and make text render well. So when they start doing those to your icons, you can kind of be a little bit surprised by what you get. Um, fallbacks and accessibility can also be a bit of a problem because fonts weren't made to package icons, they were kind of made to package text. And so you should kind of think about, well, you know, if your font doesn't get delivered or if the font can't get rendered or if a screen reader is looking at this, you know, what are they going to see? I've included a link at the end of the presentation that has basically a long form article on how to make uh, fallbacks and accessibility much better with icon fonts. Um, so as I mentioned, they're stylable, they're scalable, um, great browser support. Uh, they're a little bit of a hack still though and especially if you want to go back and adjust a font that you've created afterwards, the authoring for that is just a little bit lacking. Okay, so SVG. Um, has everybody used SVG before? Yes, great, everybody knows uh, how, how fun it is. Um, so I'm gonna rush through this part. We're running a little bit short on time, surprisingly enough. Uh, so, uh, you know, scalable vector graphics, right? It's a vector format that you can use on the web. It scales nicely because you're just describing the artwork. Um, XML, so it's pretty easily uh, readable. And it's got pretty solid browser support now. The things to be mindful of for kind of full uh, basic SVG support, you need to be, uh, kind of up to IE9 and Android 4.4. Um, got okay support in Android 4.1 and up, but it's missing some masking and clipping functionality. Um, so I'm gonna skip the different ways of including SVG in a document. Basically you can embed it uh, in line, just drop that SVG right into your uh, HTML document, or uh, you can link to it uh, the same way you would link to an image, and you can use it pretty much anywhere you can use an image now as well. Um, what I do wanna talk about though is there are a couple different ways of uh, packaging. SVG icons into a single file, and I think that these are pretty cool. So this is only like third time showing that dialogue. So uh, first way is icon stacks. Uh, icon stacks work by taking all of your icons, putting them into a single file on top of each other, hiding all of them, and then showing them, showing just the one you want. Um, and the way that they generally do this is by using the target pseudo selector. Um, so you'll hide everything, and then the actual target of your URL will be the one that's shown. And so the way that this uh, looks when used is you can just load the URL the same way you would load it as an image, and then that hash chicken is what's going to uh, target the chicken icon here. Uh, browser support here is a little bit uh, mixed. Again, IE9 and up because that's uh, where you get SVG support. Um, it was just added to iOS 8 and Safari 7.1, um, so you've got some support there, but there were still a couple bugs when I was testing it. The last method of packaging icons that I wanted to talk about was using symbols um, in SVG. And what this looks like is you basically create a symbol, which is a definition for uh, your icon, and then you'll use it using the use tag. And so I like to think of this as creating a stamp and then just stamping it all over your web page. Uh, and this is what it would look like if you're using it within your SVG document. But what's really cool about symbols is that you can actually uh, link two symbols from another SVG document. So you can put all of your icons into a single SVG file, and then you can link to them basically uh, in an embedded SVG document in your HTML. And so this is what it looks like. Um, all of those symbols defined in animals.svg. You've got your HTML document and now you're linking and instantiating the symbol. Uh, this is what it looks like when you would actually uh, use it in your HTML document. 
Um, if you're going to be using these, generally best practices is to provide a title and description um, for each of them in your SVG. There's also limited styleability when you're using symbols because you can inherit across the use boundary. Um, so basically you can set everything in your symbol uh, to have like a fill of inherit and then if you set the fill on the use tag, it'll pick it up in the symbol. And then for this, um, when I tested it on Android 4.3 it worked. A uh, thing to be mindful of is it's not yet working in IE. So what's great about uh, SVG? Um, you can use it uh, basically anywhere you can use uh, an image. You can package it in a couple different ways. It's vector based. You can use a whole bunch of drawing tools uh, to create it. Uh, Sketch, Illustrator, Paint Code will all output SVG for you. Uh, what's not is that especially for the package formats, there's a little bit of browser support that's left to be desired. So to wrap things up, uh, you know, use whatever makes your life easier. I've given you some things that hopefully you can consider when using different icon formats and hopefully a couple of the pros and cons of each. Um, personally, I'm kind of uh, growing to like SVG more and more, so I recommend using it uh, where it will make your life easier. So thanks. Um, yeah, this is my GitHub, Twitter, and where the presentation is located. So I know it was a bit rushed today, but uh, you can tweet if you have any questions um, or check the presentation out uh, afterwards. Thank you guys.